always recognised that in um, given the the release of the Welsh Rugby Union um, and the meetings that followed, that we'd have to we'd have to support that with a lot more information. Now um, it's been a couple of weeks since the press conference, and I think the the nature of the documentation is such that it, it clearly demonstrates why it's taken a couple of weeks to get it out. It is comprehensive and it's our hope that it will deal with a number of the queries that have arisen since the, the initial announcement. I, I think it's absolutely tied in with their support of, of the proposal and their desire to see rugby continue at Rodney Parade, both for Newport and professional rugby and the guys of the Dragons. Um, because the alternative, of course, is, as you'll see from the information that's put out there, is that there's a huge sum of money sitting on the balance sheet from uh, Tony and Martin in particular and, and, and Will as well. Um, and were that to be called in in its entirety, then that's a, that's a very different scenario. So, so it's a small amount that, that's being received back by the, the, the principal benefactors, if I can call them that. Um, I think it represents about 16% of the total amount loaned over, over the years. I, I think it is. I think it, it should very much back up the, uh, his great respect for Tony and, and the, the letter actually is one with quite deep feeling in it. Um, I think that his, his leadership has been, over the years, has been very important. Um, and I think he's, he's showing that once again in this. Um, I think his confidence in this being the right way forward. Uh, for the long-term future is pretty important. Well, I think that's for the for the shareholders um, to take a view on um, as to whether whether um, six hundred thousand pound represents a, a considerable sum or not. But it was also important in, in configuring this deal um, that there was a receipt by Newport RFC, and the way it's been structured is that obviously with business, with us still trading through to the end of business. The, the final figure is, is yet to be determined, but by structuring it this way, there's an assurance that Newport receives £600,000. You can actually look at it either as a development site and a value there for, or, or as a sporting venue and a value for a sporting venue. There's limited demand for sporting venue and therefore the, the value for it. The va uh, when, we, uh, when we establish the value, um, we consider that to be a very fair value for it as a sporting venue. Personally, I don't think the, the current arrangement is doing right by Newport RFC, just as it isn't doing right by the Dragons. And I think um, the, the future world, if I can put it that way, after um, the shareholders meet, and, sh and should there be a yes vote, will deliver autonomy to, to Newport, independence, debt-free, a chance to revisit their structures and the nature of the organisation, the accountabilities within recon reconstituted board, possibility of su supplementing that with a, with a management committee and bringing perhaps fresh ideas and, and support in by way of you know how, how sponsorship and other revenues can can be increased so I, I think that is a very important point that as much as we set out uh, on this journey recognizing the need to make um, the, the professional entity uh, independent um, I think that's also a very important upside for Newport.